Gautama Buddha, the light of Asia, is the founder of Buddhism, which in course of time spread far and wide to Ceylon, Burma and Siam in the south and to Tibet, China, Japan and Korea in the north. Buddha taught by conversation and his teachings were first handed down for a long time through oral instruction. Our knowledge about Buddha's teachings depends today chiefly on the Tripitakas or the three baskets of teachings compiled by his most intimate disciples. These are known as Vinaya Pitaka, dealing with the rules of conduct, Sutta Pitaka, containing sermons with parables, and the third, Abhidhamma Pitaka, discussing philosophical problems. These works are in Pali dialect and early Buddhism is based on them. Lord Buddha realized four noble truths. There is suffering, Dukkham. There is cause of suffering, Trishna or Tanha in Pali. There is cessation of suffering, Nirvana or Nibbana. And there is a way to attain it, the Eightfold Path. Ignorance is the root cause of suffering and for its removal, knowledge is necessary. That knowledge Buddha realized through meditation at Gaya and propagated it throughout his life. Buddha himself was not interested in metaphysical discussion, but he was concerned with the problem of suffering and its solution. Suffering, to come as such, is at the heart of Buddhist religion. I was thinking that these four no, these sights which he saw, old age, disease and death, in our modern world, how carefully we avoid these sights. Right now, we are under the grip of this pandemic, the um, COVID-19 virus all over the world, but especially so here in New York City. Uh, I was speaking with a doctor uh, here, and we were discussing this, you know, that how the doctors and the medical care professionals in the emergency rooms in the hospital, they are watching this life and death battle every day. And many of them are traumatized by what they are seeing, this terrible struggle to save people, most of whom are dying, thousands and thousands of deaths, hundreds of thousands of infected uh, infections and patients. And yet, most of us, we do not see it because of the system that it is all um, taken away from ambulance comes and takes away the patient into the hospital. If they survive, they come back. If they don't, they die there. But, so the result of it is that we are insulated from this suffering which is going on right now. That makes for a pleasant life for the rest of us, more or less pleasant life. But the downside is that just like that, the prince who was insulated from suffering, we are also insulated from suffering by the system we have today. Why just New York? It's the same system all over the world today. Uh, we don't get to see old age and disease and death directly, day after day. The fact is that then that suffering is no longer before our eyes. It is shunted out. We don't have to confront suffering uh, which is natural, which is there, but somehow we have hidden it from our eyes. Similarly, poverty. We don't want to look at poverty and homelessness. We don't want to look at disease. We don't want to look at old age. The downside is this um, insight which the prince got, that there is pervasive suffering and we must find a way out of it. This insight we don't get. As a result, we are shocked when the suffering spills out and we can no longer avoid it, like a pandemic. Uh, it is everywhere now and we, we have to um, confront it. It's there in everybody's lives now. Somebody said to me a couple of months ago when it was just starting, Swami, many people are going to ask, why is this happening? Why is there so much suffering? Why are people, um, why is the whole world in the grip of this suffering? And I was thinking, if you ask the Buddha, he would have probably said, why are you surprised? 
This is the very nature of life. You have insulated yourself from it. You live in a bubble and you don't see it. But it's always there. It has always been there. Individually people struggled with disease, old age, death and the rest of the world happily went on ignoring it. But now when it spills over, once in a while it will. And then nobody can avoid it. And then we are shocked as if something strange is happening. From a Buddhist perspective, suffering is universal and pervasive. The, to begin in Buddhism, the first thing one must grasp is all is suffering. Not that there is happiness and suffering. No, all is suffering. Suffering is suffering, happiness is also suffering. So what is this universal truth of suffering which um, the Buddha taught? The first thing which we have to grasp in the beginning of our spiritual life. There are, says the Buddha, three kinds of suffering. The suffering of suffering relates to the suffering of the body and the mind. A physical pain is a good example of a suffering of the body. Missing someone, anxiety, depression are examples of the suffering of the mind. These sufferings are at the mundane level and can be solved by mundane solutions. The pain can be solved by medicine. A virus can be addressed through a vaccine. Similarly, a mental suffering, anxiety, depression, missing someone can be solved through the company of loved ones, through advice, through counseling. However, these sufferings are never permanently solved and they keep recurring again and again. Next comes the suffering of change. Everything changes. Circumstances change, lives change, people change. A young and fit man changes into an old and feeble person. A relationship which is loving changes into a bitter relationship. And all this causes suffering. And then there is the pervasive suffering which occurs on account of the wrong identification of ourselves with the body and the mind. This causes endless suffering. Same suffering analyzed in another way. So this eight types of suffering comes from a great Tibetan master, Tsongkhapa. Um, he is central to Tibetan Buddhism. He lived about 500 years ago. Um, he is um, a good way of understanding it would be what Adi Shankaracharya is to Vedanta in Hinduism, Sankhapa is to Tibetan Buddhism. So that's the cent importance of Sankhapa. In fact, one of the four main traditions of Tibetan uh, Buddhist monasticism, uh, the Gelukpa, to which the Dalai Lama belongs, that was founded by Sankhapa. And the central commentarial texts of Tibetan Buddhism, many of them are written by uh, Sankhapa. Eight types of suffering. No need to feel bewildered. It's the same thing, but in a different way of, uh, way of looking at it. So he says the first one is the suffering of uh, birth. Second one is suffering of uh, old age. Third one is suffering of disease. Fourth one is suffering of uh, death. Fifth one is the suffering of coming into contact with what is unpleasant. Sixth is the suffering of the severance of contact, losing contact with what is pleasant. The seventh is the suffering of my desires not being fulfilled. And the eighth is the um, suffering of um, the ignorance of being attached to body-mind. So eight types. But it's very interesting. Uh, it's a very sophisticated way of looking at suffering. Look at the first four. These are the sites that the Buddha saw, including old age, disease and death. And he includes birth. So birth is suffering. And it's traumatic. We forget. Luckily we forget. But being born is a very traumatic process. Um, psychologists say that um, the babies have this trauma while being born and it has an effect on our uh, life. Thank God we don't consciously remember that. Then there is the suffering of old age. Bill Conrad, who is here, uh, he is 95 years old and he was telling me a few days back, he was quoting Betty Davis and he said, uh, 
Betty Davis said that suffering is not for, uh, old age is not for sissies. Old age is not for sissies. Old age is suffering. Disease is suffering as we know all today all over the world. We're all scared of the pandemic. And then death is suffering. Uh, it's interesting that the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna, um, he says to Arjuna in the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Janma mrityu jara vyadhi dukkha doshanu darshanam etad gyanam iti proktam. He says, this is knowledge to inquire into the sufferings of birth, death, old age, disease. Janma mrityu jara vyadhi dukkha doshanu darshanam. Birth is suffering, death is suffering, old age is suffering, disease is suffering. And when you understand that these are suffering, this is the basis, the foundations for jnana, for enlightenment. Exactly the same teaching which you find there. So these are the first four. Now these first four can be actually telescoped into two. Contact with what is unpleasant and loss of contact with what is pleasant. Pain and disease and, and um, um, the feebleness of old age and the slowing down of mental faculties. This is contact with what is unpleasant. And loss of contact with what is pleasant. My youth, my energy, my uh, enthusiasm, um, my possessions and money and job. All of that. So if you lose contact, that is suffering. So the, all the sufferings of the world are now telescoped into, collapsed into two. And these two also can be further, all kinds of suffering, these two also can be further compressed into one. Which is, the, um, my desires not being satisfied. That's the seventh type which Sankhapa speaks of. Everywhere we have suffering, one thing you must know for sure, something in my mind, some expectation is not fulfilled or some hope is dashed. My desire is not fulfilled. It may be justified. I may be right to expect it, but it is not fulfilled. I had something in mind, it is not fulfilled, hence I am unhappy. Simple fact, but very profound fact. You see, remember the second noble truth which is going to come is desire is the cause of suffering. So here he says, it is a desire which is not fulfilled which leads to suffering. All suffering at the back of the mind is something which was some kind of expectation, desire which was not met, frustrated. Frustration of my desire is suffering. And then the eighth one is basically the, at the root of every kind of suffering. Even this seventh one, they are all based on the last eighth one. The eighth one is clinging to body, mind as self. This ignorance based clinging to he will say five, five aggregates, but remember, five aggregates are body-mind. So this is Sankhapa's analysis of suffering, eight types of suffering. There is one more point. Each of the four noble truths has four characteristics. I will speak only about the four characteristics of the first noble truth, that is the truth of suffering. Four characteristics are um, Anityam, impermanence, Dukkham, suffering itself, Shunyam, Emptiness, anatma, selflessness. What does it mean? Very briefly, anityam. As we saw, things change. On the surface of it, it seems that things change. Yes, we know that. Things are born, they exist for some time, then they die. That's the first level. But when you look deeply at it, it is not only that things born and they exist, even when they seem to exist in a stable way, moment to moment everything is changing. Not only anityam, kshanikam. Anityam means impermanent. Kshanikam means momentary. Moment to moment things are changing. That moment to moment these things are changing, this is um, um, also not so difficult. Modern physics will tell us that yes, moment to moment things are changing. If you look even further, and more deeply, that the Buddhist will say that, that not only moment to moment it is changing, from the very beginning and throughout, the causes of destruction of everything are already there. What it means is, normally we think of a thing being born, and then it lives and it grows and develops, and then it declines and dies. But the Buddhist way of looking at it is, being born is the start of the process of dying. Birth 
itself is the beginning of dying. Creation itself is the beginning of destruction. The processes which lead to the death of the body, processes which lead to the disintegration of any entity, they are already at work when the thing is born or produced. And it is true. So this is the deep understanding of anityam. Everything is fundamentally impermanent, irredeemably so. You, it cannot be uh, remedied. And this leads to the next one which is dukkham. That being impermanent and clinging to these impermanent things as if they are, we want to live in this body and be young forever and have these objects which will give us happiness. Uh, expect people to uh, behave nicely with us forever, all the time. No, this is, not, this is not justified and yet we do that and this is Dukkham, the second factor of the first noble truth. This leads to the third factor, Shunyam. Emptiness has many aspects but the one aspect of emptiness is that the, when we expect that there is a self, I am not the body and mind, I am a separate self in charge of the body and mind. This is my body and my mind. The Buddhist says there is no such self. This is directly op uh, in opposition to the dualistic Hindu schools. And the Nyaya, the Vaisheshika, which said, apart from body and mind, there is one Atma. The Buddhist says, apart from body and mind, but that Atma, what is there? Empty, Shunyam. There is no such thing. Because we think that, that leads to suffering. And then, the fourth one, selflessness. The first one is anityam, impermanence. Second one is dukkham, suffering. Third one is shunyam, emptiness. The fourth one is selflessness or anatma. The shunyata talks about that apart from the five aggregates or body and mind, there is no self. And the anatma, selflessness, talks about that this in these five aggregates, in the body mind, there also there is no self. If you look at the body mind, the physical body, the organs, the mind, thoughts, feelings, ego, which one of them is the self? These two might seem to be a difference might be seem to be subtle. One is uh, the emptiness of self, and the other one is selflessness. There is no self apart from the body and mind. And there is no self in the body and mind also. So these are two subtle aspects. Buddha says, Kshanikam Shanikam Sarvam Shanikam There is nothing but the moment. Shunyam Shunyam Sarvam Shunyam There is nothing apart from nothingness. Dukkham Dukkham Sarvam Dukkha There is nothing apart from suffering. He teaches us what causes suffering. It's Trishna or Tanha, desire. He also teaches us the way to go beyond suffering and attain Nirvana or Nibbana by following the Eightfold Path, the Ashtanga Mark. But all that's for some other time.